Hello, I am Peter van Hursten from the South African National Bioinformatics Institute. Welcome to the tutorial about sequence mapping. As described in the theoretical introduction, sequence mapping is about finding the position of a sequence read on the reference genome using the sequence information and sometimes information about how the read was sequenced. For this tutorial, I will be working on the usegalaxy.eu server. I've used this server before, so I've got something in my history, but I want to start fresh. So I'm going to create a new history for myself and call it sequence mapping. This tutorial uses some data provided on the Zenodo service. So I've collected the links to that data from the tutorial, which you can see here. You can just go to the tutorial, and copy the links, and I'm going to load that into Galaxy. I'm going to paste fetch data and start. <clears throat> so here, Galaxy will fetch this data from the Zenodo service. This current data is quite small because we're just using it for the tutorial and we're not doing a real analysis. After a while, Galaxy will start analyzing the data that we've uploaded to collect some metadata about it. And that's why it has now gone from gray to yellow like this. Now that my data is ready in Galaxy, the first thing that I want to do is give my data sets more meaningful names. So we see here they have long names. I'm just going to call this reads two save it and I'm going to call this reads one you can give your reads a hashtag by opening the detail view and just typing something that starts with a hash When we get data from the sequencer, we typically first perform quality control and trimming before doing further analysis. Galaxy has its own tutorial on quality control, so I will skip that step here because I happen to know that this is already good quality trimmed data. Sequence mapping involves mapping reads to a reference genome. A reference genome is a high quality curated genome for the organism that you're busy analyzing. These reads came from a mouse, or that you cannot tell that by just looking at the data itself. The genome that we will use as a reference genome is the MM10 reference genome. There have been other mouse reference genomes in the past, but over time, as genome assembly improves, we find new versions of reference genomes becoming available. For instance, in human, we have HG19 and HG38. The decision as to which ones you use is largely determined by which tools you're using. Some databases are built for a particular reference genome, and then you have to use that reference genome in your analysis. When we're dealing with bacteria, there are often many reference genomes because of the diversity within bacterial species. There are many mappers available, but for this tutorial, we'll be using one well-known one called Bowtie 2. So let's find Bowtie 2 here in the Tools menu. And there it is. So firstly, it asks us if our reads are single-ended or paired-end, and these are paired-end reads. So we set them up like that. And then it asks us some questions about paired-end options. So let's have a look at these paired-end options. The minimum and the maximum fragment length. Remember that paired and reads come from either side of a fragment of DNA. So we could guide the mapper by specifying how large we expect that fragment of DNA to be. I'm going to leave these at the defaults. Then the upstream downstream mate orientation. Do we know if the read one is forward and read two is reverse and so on? Well, this is something that we'll know from library construction time. We don't know with uh, these reads, so I'm going to leave this option off. But uh, if we do have this information, it can make mapping a little bit more accurate. 
So I'm leaving these as defaults. Then the question of the reference genome. At the moment, we're working with mouse data, which is a model organism with a well-known reference genome, and that is built into this Galaxy server. So I can just search for MM10, and there it is. Sometimes we are working with a less well-known organism, and we might bring our own reference uh, genome, which we would load into the history and load from the history. The next question is about read group information which is uh, how to tag the alignment in terms of which data set it came from. This is very useful if you're dealing with multiple data sets, uh, but we're not using it today. And then finally, I want to save the bow tie to mapping statistics to the history. So I can know a little bit about how the mapping has proceeded. Having done all of this, I now hit execute. Short read mapping is a somewhat time consuming process. In this tutorial, however, we are dealing with small data sets and mapping should proceed relatively fast. Our mapping has completed. Let us have a look at some statistics about how the mapping was done. So as we know, our reads are all paired. In this case, we only have 50,000 reads. It's a really small number these days. And then 1,880 of those did not map. And then 3,389 mapped in multiple sites. So when we look at these two numbers, then the reads that did not map and the reads that mapped in multiple sites uh, tell us something about our data. Okay. So these non mapped reads, it could be a result of sequencing errors. It could be a result of divergence between the reference genome and our reads because there is, of course, a mutation in the species that is not captured in the reference genome. Uh, and these multi-map reads, it could be because of something like, for instance, a repetitive DNA in the genome. Now that we've looked at some statistics about the mapping, let's look at the mapped reads themselves. So this is a BAM or SAM format. Um, behind the scenes, it could be compressed BAM, but Galaxy will show it to us in a human readable format like this. And we see here that we have a number of columns, Q name, flag, R name, etc. So this is the query, read name, the flags, the reference name, the position, mapping quality, cigar, string, I'll get to that in a bit. Then uh, the pair read name, pair read position, and then uh, insertion size and the sequence and further on the quality of the sequence and some optional flags at the end there. And then here at the top, all these lines that start with at signs are uh, header lines and over here we see there are different types of header lines and these are just describing the um, chromosomes in the mouse genome reference that we've been using. <clears throat> and here we get the actual mapped read. So here's the read name, the the um, flag then we have uh, the chromosome the position and the mapping quality now mapping quality is a alignment specific uh, figure there is no standard for what these numbers mean um, then we get the so-called cigar string now cigar string tells us something about matches and mismatches so we see here 51 matches over here we see 21 matches uh, one insertion and then another 21 matches. Um, then which uh, reference sequence was matched by the pair? Well, it was the same one and the pair is matched at this position. And then we get this uh, insertion uh, sequence size 
and that's basically related to the fragments that we were sequencing and therefore the gaps between the different reads in the read sequence itself, its quality, and some further information. So BAM format gives us the raw information on the reads and how they align. But if we want to visualize the alignment, we need to use a special purpose alignment viewer. I have the IGV alignment viewer installed on my computer. Uh, and here it is. And we can see at the moment it has the mouse MM10 genome loaded, uh, but it has no information about the alignments. Galaxy can link our alignment file to the local viewer. So if I click on the title of the alignment file here, and I look at the list of visualizations, then one of them is display with IGV local, okay? When I click that, just going back to my web browser, notice that Galaxy does something, does some preparation of the data, and then feeds it through to my IGV. And IGV is now, uh, running, but we can't see the alignments because there's only about 50,000 reads here and they're scattered across the genome. Let's go back to our BAM. And just take one example. So let's look at chromosome one and this position. Chromosome one, colon, and put a position in. And we wait a while because Galaxy is now loading the data from the Galaxy server to my local computer. And here's the read aligned. And notice over there, this little eye. Remember from the uh, cigar format, it said there was an insertion in the sequence. And there is the insertion and insertion of AA. So now let's go back to the tutorial. And they suggest looking at this region of chromosome two while IGV is busy loading, notice the format of positions in IGV. Chromosome, name, colon, the start position, hyphen, and the end position. These commas are put in here by IGV. We don't need to type them. So here we have a region of the chromosome with a, a large number of reads mapped. The colors relate to how well they are mapped uh, and the insert size that is uh, detected. In other words, the size um, of the Peter to fragment that these uh, reads came from. And this graph at the top here is a graph of depth of coverage. So we can see here peak coverage is uh, about 200 in this position and dropping down to nothing here. It's very difficult to say anything about this coverage because we have such a small sample, uh, but we often do look at a graph like this to see whether we actually have enough reads in a region in order to realistically detect variants. Talking about variants, if we look over here, then we can see these reads all seem to have a variant compared to the reference genome. Looking closer and we can zoom in a bit more. And we see here that it's saying that there is a C compared to the T, sorry, this is very small, there's a T in the reference genome at this position, but here we have a C. So that suggests that the sample that we had had a genuine difference compared to the reference in this position. If we want to change the color coding of uh, the reads, we can right click. And there are many options in the um, ITV right click menu, including how to color the reads. For instance, you can color by which strand they match to, let me zoom out a little bit, see that more, uh, see it more easily. And then we can go back to the default coloring. Uh, Google IGV read colors to get a guide from the authors as to what all these different colors mean. Now going back to Galaxy, I mentioned before that every time I'm working with data on my local IGV, it's downloading that data to my local computer. It can be time consuming. So we can also use a in Galaxy genome browser called JBrowse. So let's find JBrowse. 
And what we want to run is jbrowse, the genome browser, not any of these other organisms, uh, um, not any of these other tools I meant. And again, we're going to use a built-in genome and we're going to use the MM10 uh, genome. If you were dealing with a custom genome, you'd uh, mention that here. And we're going to create a new jbrowse instance. We're not updating an existing one. So let's insert a track group. We can give it a name, but I'll stick with default. And I'm going to insert an annotation track from BAM pileups. So it already selects my only BAM output, which is the bowtie 2 alignment. And here I want to switch to auto-generate SNP track because I don't have a deep coverage BAM file. And I want to put the track visibility as on for new users. Now I click run. Because JBrowse is building a whole website for us, it takes a while to run. <clears throat> My JBrowse has finally finished running. It took quite a while to run. Uh, it uh, is only meant to take a few minutes, but for some reason, mine took more than half an hour. So if your JBrowse is taking a long time to process, it might be because of server issues where JBrowse is running and just be patient and find something else to do and come back to it later. Otherwise, I'm going to make this history available by a link uh, that you can click on to get your own copy of the history so that you don't need to wait for the processing to finish. Now I'm going to view the JBrowse results. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to move the Galaxy sidebars to the side using these little arrows in the corners um, because I want to use my whole screen to see what JBrowse is showing me. I asked for it to allow to enable these tracks by default, but it didn't do so. So now I'm enabling the Bowtie 2 tracks, uh, the including the snips and coverage track. And you see it says loading, but now this is not loading um, just on my local browser, but it's also loading data from uh, the server that Galaxy is running on into the JBrowse browser. And I look down here and I can see this gray bar is the depth of coverage across the genome. So if I take a well-represented segment like this, and I go there, I can then zoom in on perhaps just this region. When I do that, then I see that the reads are colored in blue and red. Uh, you saw that that was one of the coloring schemes allowed in um, IGV in terms of whether it is a forward or reverse read. Now I'm going to go back to the tutorial and I'm going to take these coordinates. So it says here, zoom in at these coordinates. But when I put this in JBrowse, this is how, uh, with a hyphen is how uh, the IGV dis displays coordinates. JBrowse uses two dots between the start and end coordinates, not a hyphen. So I have to change that like this. So we're seeing chromosome two from this coordinate to that coordinate. Now I hit enter. And once again, JBrow starts loading the data. Now this uh, view should be familiar because this is the same data that we were looking at with um, IGV. We can see there the peak of coverage, we can see the dips in coverage, and we can see some places where uh, JBrowse thinks there might be a SNP. Now remember that this is a first approximation. A genome browser is not a SNP caller. So you, this is just demonstrating that you can use JBrowse as an alternative to view your alignment within Galaxy without having to download the entire alignment to your local computer. And that brings us to the end of our tutorial. I hope that you now appreciate how straightforward running mapping is within Galaxy, but also how your choice of tools and approaches for short read mapping depends on the data that you're working with. And your starting point for all of these 
processes is knowing your data, both knowing your reference genome, which is the best one to work with for your particular use case, and knowing the sequencing platform that you've used for the generating the sequence reads. I look forward to interacting with people during the interactive sessions.